and it was just one of those things that kind of came across. Like I used to, well, back when I was kind of just working from from show to show, it was like smaller roles, and so uh, you know I wasn't used to one long term project like this. Like it's been so long since I've auditioned, uh, done like a lot of auditions in a row since then. But I was used to it back then, and it was just sort of audition, 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 and uh, even back then pre COVID, it was a lot of self tapes. And I got a self tape for this and sent it in and didn't really expect to hear back on it. And I was like, I'm not gonna get that. Um, <laughs> but then I did. And then I yeah, like, yeah went in for a screen test. And yeah. the first screen test was, was with this, this guy right here. Yeah. Um, and it was great. And met his dad. It's the only time I've ever met Alex's dad. Um, yeah. And I loved it. Uh, his dad's great. Uh, yeah. Reminds me of him a lot. Very similar. The apple doesn't fall far from the tree. <laughs> And um, yeah, and then yeah, after that, screen tested with Bitsy. I'm sure some of you guys uh, were here and saw her yesterday. She's awesome. And then got the call like literally an hour later. I was still sitting in the studio in Burbank, California, and I got the call. And I was wow, so psyched. Like so, I was so psyched. Was yeah, great. like pins and needles when you're like, I got it. This is it. I was I was freaking out. I was also really tired, so it was like internal excitement. Yeah, and I was like. Oh, yeah, it's good. It's hard, I know, and then it, it, your your reaction can be muted sometimes, you know, because it's so overwhelming and you are so exhausted. It takes like, so long to process. Inside, I am jubilant, but it doesn't seem like it on the outside. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. And Alex, you saw like, I don't know if this is true, but you saw like, it, it's almost like a, a Hollywood movie in itself. You saw like an open casting call on a bulletin board in your school? Well, okay, so my agent did give me, I had an agent at the time, they okay. did give me the audition, but I went to this performing arts school. Shout out LaGuardia High School. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Timothy Chalamet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, okay. he, he was there, he, he graduated like eight years before me. A lot of people came from there. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, Gerald Jerome also came from the Ansel Elgort, all these people oh, recently. Wow. Yeah, yeah, and then and then there's me. Uh, <laughs> disappointment now. <I'm> <laughs> wah, um, wah. No, no, no. Uh, yeah, but I did see it on the wall of my school, uh, and I was just like, oh, it's strange. Uh, I have this audition to see it on the wall of my school, and I was auditioning for this guy's part. Oh and, wow! Well, yeah. So I, I, I was a lot scrawnier back then. Um, I have many. I have. Nerve. I have a pinched nerve in my arms. I haven't been able to work out. But I he was, was getting jacked for a while. Massive, like John Cena, massive. Yeah, well, you know it. I actually grew up to six foot four too. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Okay. So uh, I got the audition. It was for Matthew, right, at the time, which was Jonathan, and it was like, Coach, I'm sorry, I'm just too good at football. Uh, and the coach was like, Yeah, that's why we got to put you there instead of the seniors. I don't think that's fair. Um, but I know I'm naturally good. It was, it was one of those things that this guy could pull off so easily and I just can't. It's not my skill set. So I remember just like putting the paper down midway through and being like, yo, I'm going to waste your time with this. I'm sorry. And she took me to the back to my surprise and gave me another role. Uh, I went in the next day. Uh, at one point I stood on the arms of the chair, which I won't do here because I was told not to stand on it things. It will topple. But yeah, yeah, there was this scene that we were reaching up for the rowdy. stood on the arms of the chair, I was like rocking around, I was just having a ball at it. Uh, screen tested, came all the way through. Um, uh, it was just a great time and then I got the call like two hours after my final screen test. Uh, and you know, big shout out to uh, David Rappaport who cast this show. That guy's because, awesome. Yeah, yeah he, he truly... He, he just, first of all, his talent is just incomparable. Uh, not only finding people that are good for the role, but finding people that will be good with each other and good people as well. Uh, this show wouldn't be the same show if uh, the rest of my castmates weren't the amazing people that they are, and I really have him to thank for that. That's a great comment, and you see it in the show, the chemistry between uh, Tyler and Bitsy, it's so palpable, and you two as siblings, I mean, it's so natural, and you both actually physically look like you could be their, their kids. I agree. I'll take it as a compliment. Yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a good, guy right here. Good-looking people. And Jordan, tell us about working on Little Fires Everywhere because you were uh, alongside Reese Witherspoon. That was a big project as well. Dude, that was a whole different experience. It was totally different in, in, in every way, shape, and form. Um, still an amazing experience and amazing people, but it was just so different because it's like went from literally doing student films and you know and and right out of theater and. You know, a few small roles and some and some bigger things to uh, a supporting role in a huge show with A-listers, like and and not only yeah. A-listers, but 
one of the biggest females in Hollywood, a, a tycoon. I mean, this lady is incredible. She is built an empire. Uh, she has her own production company that is has made so many things, like Little Fires. Uh, you know, funded it as well, like uh, Big Little Lies and Little Fires, and and is, I think she recently made like another Legally Blonde, Legally Blonde three. Yeah, I think that's, is like that, that still coming or? Yeah. There's, I don't know. It's in the works. I don't know. I, yeah. I, yeah, I'm not. Uh, she's very busy, and so I don't. Needless to say, I don't talk to her on the daily. <laughs> uh, but. She, uh, yeah, she's amazing, and that show was a blast to work on, and I definitely miss it, but um, I don't miss being in L.A. I'm not a huge, I'm not a huge fan of L.A., but I did like shooting there. It was cool to, I would never spent a lot of time in L.A., so it was cool to spend some time there, but I'm glad that, you know, change of pace, Vancouver, it's very different. Yeah, yeah L.A. just kind of too, too much hustle and bustle? Yeah, and, and just a lot, uh, you know, some of the people there are, um, you know, <laughs> yeah, I, I, we're picking up what you're putting down. And you're are you from Austin? I am. Yeah, great town. Amazing. Love town, that man. city. So, oh, dude. Yeah, it's great. Okay, uh, let's open it up to some questions. Uh, I love this. Before I've even said anything, you already got a question. Uh, so you know the drill. Line up in an orderly fashion. The mics are here on the uh, aisles. Keep your masks on if you can, and make sure you just uh, get right up to that mic and project your voice. Uh, but, we will get to your questions before that, though. I just want to ask you guys, um, getting into the, uh, the the mindset of playing siblings, of playing brothers, how did that come about naturally? Did you guys get together beforehand and <laughs> do any kind of like exercises, or did you go hang out, or how did you establish that rapport as brothers? Uh, you know, uh, I think COVID had a lot to do with it as well. Uh, you know, we're from two very different places. I'm from New York, as you were hearing on my speaker as it's coming out. And, uh, he, you know, he's from Austin, Texas, which are just two very different places. Yeah. But the thing about COVID is that, you know, it brings people closer together who are physically together. And uh, that's certainly what it did for us as well. Not saying that the chemistry still wouldn't be there, because, again, I do think naturally we just have a lot in common as well. But uh, COVID definitely did play a role in bringing it over the edge. Interesting. How about you, Jordan? I agree. I think, yeah, it's, uh, I mean, we literally didn't, and like Alex said, I think we'd get along either way, but I think it it was a catalyst. Uh, the COVID was, was a catalyst for it because it kind of jump-started our relationship, and so it was very easy for us to hang out because we really didn't have anything else to do. You know, so it was like we just, we just hung out. We hung out every day because, like, what else is there to do? Yeah. It's COVID. I can't, do, I can't do anything. I can't even sit down in a restaurant to eat at the time, you know. Um, I know. So, yeah. Shout, right. out, shout out to COVID-19. <laughs> yeah. COVID-19. Boo. 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 <laughs> All right. Question time. Go ahead for our lovely panel. Hi, Alex. Hi, Jordan. Uh, oh. The question I have is what's been the biggest blooper on set so far? Oh, I like that one. Um, That's a good one. <laughs> Plenty of people have like fallen and eaten uh, crap. Has, has, crap. Poop, poop. has Tyler ever fallen as like you know Superman and, and like he just looks so ridiculous and it was like wow that Superman mystique just fell away. You know Tyler isn't as big a faller as Bitsy. Bitsy's definitely very clumsy. She, she's, Bitsy's super she's clumsy. super clumsy. She's always tripping oh, like, over missing stuff. Missing her chair when she's sitting down. Right, it's, right. We're we're always laughing at her. It's great. Yeah. Uh, she's always <laughs> laughing at us though too. And it's 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 reciprocated. It often. is. It is, uh, and uh, Tyler, when the first time I saw Tyler in the suit, it was such a dad moment. He started Fortnite dancing, like two oh, years after that was over. Wow. It was like, it's like if I went up, like out of this stage, like, you know what I mean? Like, I, I, imagine this, all right? I go out like this. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. You see, you see, it's just like Two there's a visceral reaction. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, that was certainly fun to see him do that. That's Dude. awesome. Yeah. Hey, you guys will be there one day too, okay? <laughs> they all, that's what they always tell school. us. That's, that's what they strange. always tell us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I gotta start wearing the underwear on the outside. <laughs> <laughs> now, when we get the um, like the Blu-ray or the DVD releases, do you think they'll have like a blooper reel on there? I really hope so. We have yeah. so many bloopers. I mean, and, and, um, besides the fact, like. You know, his real name's Jordan. My fake name's Jordan. So we, we could probably fill reams. We could probably write War and Peace all over again, but it's just all the times that they've messed that up. I mean, I mess it up too. Yeah. You know, it, it, it's a lot, but it makes sense, by the way, for anyone asking. Uh, if you think about it, Jordan has the powers, so Jor-El was his father with powers, and then Jonathan is without powers, and uh, it's the John-El, you know what I mean? Jonathan Kent. You know what, dude? It's so funny you say that, because I was trying to keep track of 
uh, with respect, who, which character is which, and the Jor-El thing made me uh, remember about the power. So yeah, that's a good kind of like note. It's so funny because my name is Point Jordan reference. Elsass. Jor-El. So I was thinking about, I was like, maybe I'll get a custom vanity plate that says Jor-El. I was like, ah, Yeah, you need like a hyphen. Yeah. Elsass. Sass. be kind of sick. Sass. <laughs> So Jay Sass. Jay Sass. Jay Sass. Okay, I think. Are you, do you have a question or are you doing the bit again? Daddy? Yeah, he, this is the daddy guy. Yeah, he comes up and he just says daddy. Daddy. Yeah. Daddy. Sup? He doesn't have a question. What's up, my child? It's your long lost, long lost son. Daddy. My long lost son. Come, come to me. <laughs> come, come. Just, oh, yes! yes. They passionately, passionately embrace. We've broken new ground. Passionately. <laughs> COVID be damned. Nice, thank you so much. They literally just ended COVID-19. That's it's over. Single it's ending. over. Everybody take off your mask. It's kidding. all it took. One hug. I love that. Yeah, he, he uh, joined us yesterday as well. Oh, yeah. Go ahead over here. Hey, guys. I was just wondering for your roles, like, you know, you've got your powers that you're trying to uh, emulate and you've got like your physicality of the football scenes. Do you have to do any sort of additional physical training to get prepped? Well, we both uh, were training offset just independently in our own time. There's a small gym at the studio that uh, Tyler and some of the producers were kind enough to put together for us with some pretty basic equipment, um, you know, a leg press and lap pull downs and just you know pretty pretty basic stuff. But definitely keep that kept us in shape when we couldn't go to the the regular gym. Um, and I trained with uh, this this guy right here was training more since he's got the powers. He's training uh, with. Um, the uh, gentleman named Kirk Jakes, and he's incredible, amazing. Uh, I've trained with him some as well, so fight training. Uh, he's an MMA beast. I mean, he's been, what, 40-some years, 40-some yeah. odd years. Yeah, you like, tweeted a great photo of the two of you, right? Yeah, um, I actually, when I did my Instagram takeover as well, I tried to give a little taste. You know, the thing is, is that it's crazy. And one of the first celebrities he trained was 20 years ago, he trained Tom Welling. Uh, wow. Right, so I was actually, when I got to meet Tom yesterday, we were talking about him for a while. I mean, uh, very, very solemnly do you find a man of such skill, kindness, and wisdom. Uh, it is an honor. It's one of the honors of my life to get to work with him so extensively. Uh, you know, we're, we're doing fight training in the potential hypothetical case I ever do fighting. Um, yeah, it, it's absolutely been an honor. He's awesome. Yeah? Yeah? Sweet. Thank you. Good question. Thank you. My Goodbye, child. son. Let's say goodbye to your son. My child. <laughs> <laughs> See you in the next 20 years. We don't get punked too often in the panels, but when we do, it's memorable. Hey, you know what? It keeps it fun. Respect. That's right. <laughs> oh, there's a Supergirl here. Question over here. Yeah, look at that outfit. Thank you. My question is, if you can cross over with any show, like any show that's ever existed, not just Arrowverse, what show would it be and why? Breaking Bad. I was literally <laughs> this. Yeah. Me and this guy have the same favorite show. Yeah. Just imagine if Gus Fring walked in. Gus faced Fring off walks with, in. Faced off with Clark Kent, like the nicest guy ever, and like he the was, most evil he sociopathic. Was, like he was on this stage two years ago, and he was incredible. He he's mm -hmm. such a humble, incredible individual, and uh, oh. he, he had the. He had all of us in the palm of his hand. Yeah, John Carlos Esposito. He's a great he's guy. Incredible. I got to meet him once. He's really cool. What do you guys love about Breaking Bad? Uh, I think so many, every single character is so grounded and so you get to see sides of them that I think it's it's funny because we all have like dark and light in us, you know, and I think that's the beauty of like even just Walter White is, you know, he's an anti-hero, he's, he's starts out as very harmless and benign and then changes into just a power hungry, very evil, you know, very self-centered and just just completely changes, and, and I think we all know someone or have seen someone or have at least heard of somebody like that, and we, we know that, 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 that money and power and these, these, these things, these factors that drive us all to some degree in daily life can get out of control and, and really take over, and it's just, I don't know, I mean, I really just think there are so many things that make the show great, but that's something that stands out to me, is just all the characters are so mesmerizing to watch, and like, the actors are, uh, I mean, I don't think there's a single actor in that show, oh, even that. side characters, even small little side characters yeah. that weren't incredibly talented and had their own well-rounded sort of multi-dimensional. Like, yeah. you, even Jesse's, like, uh, dumbass friends were yes. like, they were so good as those characters. Yes. Yeah. 
I, I honestly, I have to say that that's probably a lot on, well, the casting agents, but also the directors. I mean, you're getting people that have smaller parts, uh, therefore usually less resumes, and you're getting them to do grounded, amazing performances on no practice. I mean, that is such a talent. So, yeah, Vince Gilligan, I think, is just a genius. He's the creator of that show. Vince, if you I, see this, we love you. I, we, we love you. We, we love you. you. Please hire us. Seriously, please. like, please, yeah. hire, please hire us. No. No, Jesse, Jesse, but if Superman came from Krypton with a red sun, Jesse. Mr. White, <laughs> Mr. White. Mr. White, Mr. White. But no, if, if, if Krypton had a red sun, then how come when uh, Superman goes inside, he's not charged up? Because his cells have solar batteries, because Jesse. Jesse. Because he has a solar battery, Jesse. <laughs> but Mr. White, I don't know, he can go all day. So good. That's so the good. crossover. We just did it. Very off topic. Yeah, I love that. There's a whole different show. About a whole different show. Yeah. Woo! Breaking Bad, everyone. Woo! Breaking Bad. Good stuff. All right, once again, if you have a question for these two fine gentlemen, you can come up to the mics there and uh, ask them what your hearts desire. Go ahead over here. Hi. Um, I was wondering if there are any other Arrowverse characters you'd let your characters meet, who would it be? Like if it was a superhero or like... Yeah. <laughs> oh, anyone anyone else they would play? Or no, like they would want their characters to meet. Oh, on the show. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good one. Um, I, I think... I think, uh... I think Jordan could probably learn a lot from Bruce Wayne. Uh, if I had a, if I had a thing, you know, someone who had a lot taken away from him early yeah. in life and was able to muster up the courage and uh, also the skill to use his pain for good. Uh, you know, the thing about growing up is that oftentimes we have all these adult emotions and it comes before the adult maturity and the adult ways of handling them. And I think that's a big theme between our two characters is that they start to develop these emotions and not necessarily know how to deal with them. Uh, I think Bruce Wayne is someone who embodies that maturity very well. So yeah, I think Jordan Kent meeting Bruce Wayne, there would be a lot of mutual benefit there. For sure. I think Jonathan Kent meeting uh, Supergirl um, because I'd like to meet Melissa because I have a crush, I have a crush on her. <laughs> so, so not not actually not having to do with the character much at all. But... Hey, at least you're honest. She was great in Whiplash. We appreciate it. She was great in Whiplash. Oh my god, another great movie. Briefly. Oh yeah, I love Whiplash. She was, she was very brief in it, but another movie where everyone was great in it. J.K. Simmons, what a performance. Yeah. Both of them, though, what a performance. Man. I love that wow. we're talking about all these other things. That's oh, great. We should talk about everything but Superman. Let's do it. <laughs> this is officially just the, the boys talking. It's the meaning of life. The meaning of life. Have you guys seen First Man? Damien Chaz Chazelle's uh, uh, space epic with Ryan Gosling? Oh, no. you gotta check that one out. Yeah. yeah. Ryan Gosling plays Neil Armstrong. That's all I'm gonna say. That's yeah. kinda sick. Super good. That's super sick. Yeah. Uh, let's take one over here. Go ahead. Uh, were you guys also fans of Superman before you got casted? Absolutely. I loved Smallville. Um, loved Smallville. So, like, yesterday I was in the green room just, just kicking it, uh, taking a little break, eating some food, and Tom Welling just walked in and just, like, was like, yo, what's up? Set his backpack on the table next to me. Out of all the tables there, and like not like it wasn't because it was in the science seat or anything. He just like y'all, like, blah, 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 blah. and I'm like, <laughs> I'm, I'm a big, big fan. Uh, definitely starstruck. Um, and yeah, I mean, I loved. I was I was always a Superman, but I gotta say, I was more of a Batman fan. I was I, quite honestly, I was I was a huge like Dark Knight trilogy will forever be my favorite superhero movies ever. Just phenomenal. Um, but yeah, I mean, always, always a Superman fan as well. But always a DC guy. I gotta say, I mean, not that, no, 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 this to Marvel. You know, I like Marvel, but DC. <laughs> Alex, you got. Oh, oh, oh! Uh, I was enamored by your answer. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, similar to Jordan, I was a big fan of the Dark Knight trilogy. Uh, I hadn't seen too much Superman content before this, uh, which I don't know if it was helpful or, or not. I mean, I know Tyler hasn't seen any very much on purpose. He wants to create his own version of the character. Considering my character is canonical, half not canonical, I don't know the. I don't know if it would help or hurt. Uh, I know I'm not fired yet, though, so I don't want to mess with it. <laughs> I think you guys are doing the right thing. You're taking your own approach. And we, we talked about this yesterday uh, with the rest of the cast in terms of, like, a clean slate for these characters, you know? Yes. And that's the freshness that this show brings. Yeah, I, I think that ability to pull what the writers want out of the canon and to use it uh, in whatever way they really desire 
makes them tell the best story they possibly can rather than the story that they can. For sure. You know what I mean? So, and we shouldn't always be bound by canon either. I mean, it, it's there as a route, but it also offers the opportunity to uh, take it in new tangents and directions. I agree. Yeah, yeah. When, you're, um, you know, when your toolbox becomes your birdcage. You know what I mean? It's, Good one. It's, no, it's yeah, right. yeah, right. yeah, you're a poet. Thank, thank you, thank you. Here all day. Uh, wait till you see my uh, my disrupt. Actually, he has a distract. Do you want? Do you want to play for the, the level people? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, no, but I'm serious about that. I mean, the fact that we can use the stuff from the canon to tell the best story we possibly can, and the fact that they are doing it so effectively. I mean, they have some deep cuts. Uh, earlier this season it was revealed that there are people running around that are wearing the House of Elcrest and um, that was a really deep cut I think from the 90s uh, so we have some great people writing that and another shout out to like Todd Helbing, Greg Berlanti, all the people that wrote it made it grounded and some incredible I mean uh, com yeah canon easter eggs like I mean yeah, yeah, yeah and you can really, bridge really bridge different generations you know and, and, and yeah. eras of, of the characters I mean it, it's crazy right I mean it's it's almost 90 years old Superman that's absolutely insane we have one of the longest canons ever yeah. right yeah. I mean yeah continues to find new audiences uh, okay we'll take a question on this side Hello, this is Adrian. We met a couple hours ago at your table. Um, I had asked you some questions about what it's like to play as brothers, but we've already touched on, on that in this panel. So I thought I'd ask you, um, you know, your characters both live in more rural areas, and I'm wondering what that's like for you uh, to film that. As you have mentioned, you're both from larger cities. I'm wondering um, how is that, have you, and also like having moved from America to Canada, has that, uh, what's that experience been like for you? Good question. Interesting. Uh, uh, you know, it was interesting. I had kind of a parallel experience with the character uh, coming from bustling New York to somewhat quieter Vancouver. Uh, I didn't exactly get the experience of going from a place that's, I think, based off of Chicago to the middle of nowhere in Kansas. But I did get the idea of downsizing quite quickly as I came out here and couldn't find a burger at 3 a.m. like I normally did back home. Uh, yeah, that's a great uh, distinction to make on a parallel, I think, between the, the real world and the fictional. We were certainly living that for quite some time. And, you know, these, these guys are city boys, right? And, you know, you can tell it in the way that Lois carries herself versus the people in the town. Another great little thing to notice about the portrayals of the characters is that they all very much know where they came from. Uh, big shout out to Emmanuel Shriki and uh, both Eric Valdez as well because they are both incredible at showing that they're from that small town and yeah, that Bitsy, yeah. in contrast, seems like she's from a city. It's such a big theme in the whole thing. And Tyler's a nice mix, right? Especially as Clark, it's yeah. like he, he, it's such a good mix because you can tell that he, he's very grounded and like he grew up in Smallville, but he lived in the city for a while and he's a grown man now and he's, a lot's changed and he's a dad, you know? I mean, it's, it's an incredible, it really is a good contrast. And, and I do have to say, I mean, you know, right now, it's, I think two years ago, we thro crossed the threshold that more people are living in cities than in farms and in the rural areas for the first time, right? So I think there's a bit of a statement to be made uh, in them going the opposite direction. Uh, you know, I, a lot of times we look to the past to learn something that we can't find out right now. And uh, I think Jordan's anxiety journey, and you know, you see his progression in attempting to get better and attempting to become more mature, or at least deal with the anxiety in healthy ways. I think a lot of that has to do with getting out of the city, which is kind of an unnatural environment for him, and going to a place where he feels like he can belong. It's so funny because uh, the, the notion of, of going into the big city from the, being the country farm kid, that, that was something explored decades ago, and now it's like it seems like you want to get out of the city and almost seek refuge in these smaller towns, in these rural areas. Plus, we can't afford to live in the city. But it's, it's really you know, kind of come full circle in a way. Yeah, it really has. Uh, I think it's a beautiful sentiment that the show put together. You know, our, our showrunner is from Wisconsin, right? He, uh, he's from a little town in Wisconsin. He talks about it frequently. So I think a lot of him is in this. You know, a lot of his kindness is in this. You know, he, if you ever met him, he's just an extremely kind and well thought out guy. He's really cool. Uh, and I think a lot of the show really is him. And all the charm of the show is kind of a mix between the actors, but mainly him as well. Very cool. Uh, Jordan, I want to talk to you about the, the character dynamics because you've got 
Clark Kent, Superman, you know, superhero, and then you got Lois Lane, Pulitzer Prize winning journalist, breaking all these big stories. Your brother has these powers emerging, and here we have you as a seemingly kind of normal teen. Like, do you, how do you embrace that character in terms of keeping everyone grounded and bringing like humanity to the whole aspect of it? Well, I think that a lot of, of, of who Jonathan is, uh, I think that he hasn't actually found himself yet fully. I think that he was raised very well. Um, he has great parents that have taught him very well, and he is brave, and he has a good heart. Uh, but I also think that he hasn't fully, he, he doesn't have a lot to go off of. He's still very young, and he's still very impressionable, and he's still growing, and he was now thrust into this world where everything's just kind of moving really fast and he's having to adapt. And uh, I think that, you know, as time goes by, it's sort of this slow cooker of pressure and I think that he is gonna change as he gets older, I think. Uh, not necessarily uh, for the better or for the worse, but I just think he is gonna change. I think that there's, there's no question that the, the, the events that are occurring uh, on a, almost on a daily basis for these characters and, and him having to witness that and the pressure his parents are under and now understanding that is gonna mature him faster, uh, but it's also gonna change him a lot and, and his, his life is on a completely different path now than sort of when we began and when we, and, and you'll even see those changes uh, and a lot of that had to do with the writing, you know, I can't even take credit, but a lot of the changes from the early scripts, uh, like episode 101, 102, to now, to season two, there's, there's a lot that's changed in the performance uh, and the writing just since then. And, um, and I think right now, Jonathan has, has grown a lot. I think he's matured a lot. And I think that's very apparent uh, in the character. I think that, you know, if he went from where he was, like, like season one, episode one, and then it was just like, boom, you know, this is happening. And he already knew his dad was Superman and he was that same kid that he was then. Uh, and he'd known all along. I think it would be, it would be just different. I mean, I don't even know, you know, he would just be like, maybe a little lost, maybe a little lost in the, in the, in the world and, and what's going on. And I think uh, because of the, the, seeing his brother having to adapt and seeing this, this pressure on his brother, it's sort of this teamwork, right? Like it's sort of like being in the military, you know, uh, these guys make it through these horrible, tough situations because their brothers are around them. And uh, that's, it's, it's sort of the same thing. Like he's seeing how this guy's coping very well and how he's grown a lot uh, from, the, from the young Jordan Kent we saw that was kind of angsty and always complaining and oh, everything's so hard. And, and now he's taking responsibility and he's standing up and he's doing what's right and what's good. Uh, and again, a lot of that stems from Lois and Clark being amazing parents and teaching their kids to always do the right thing and integrity and honor and uh, respect. And I just think it's, I think it's beautiful. I think the family dynamic in general is just really good and I think that's why the show also is doing well is because people love to see that. There's a lot of shows out there nowadays that are great shows, but there's also a lot of dark uh, you know, negativity and, and cynicism and and I think it's nice to see something sort of like Ted Lasso. Ted Lasso, we both yeah. love that show. And it's just such a happy, positive show with good people doing the right thing. And that makes everyone smile because the world doesn't have enough of that. There's never enough of that. Um, so it's it's just good to see it. But yeah. Well said. That's great. You'll come to see them as being, uh, you know, a uh, thing? Or do you think he'll come to see it as being more of a curse and just want to be like a regular guy? with, you know, no powers, just a normal kid with, you know, no super super uh, parents. Uh, so I'm just wondering how you see that evolving. You know, yeah, I think it started out, uh, I think, well, first of all, he, he thought that he had powers. I think, uh, initially, I think a lot of what makes both of our characters make sense is a lot of the stuff that happened before the pilot, which is, you know, he was very popular and I had no friends and... I'm talking like with the character Jonathan was very popular and Jordan had very little friends and he was constantly bullied and all of that So I think when he found out that you know all of that All those feelings that made him feel different might have had a basis and a big lie that his parents were telling him He blew up in that scene in the pilot and then he also thought it was this guy He thought he got all the worst parts of it like everything else in his life and none of the good parts When he finds out he has powers, I think it also just scares him uh, uh, you see in episode 6 uh, him kind of breaking down at the end of it because he really thought he hurt Tag and then he broke his arm and his emotions got out of control and all of a sudden now when his emotions get out of control they affect people and again it's a great 
way of expressing growing up, right? You, you know, you're, if you're in mil middle school or elementary school and, you know, you, you insult your friend, they'll be over it the next day. But we start to realize that our emotions and particularly our actions when we act on them have consequences on the people that we love. And the powers are just a metaphor of exaggeration in that regard. So, yeah, you seem to start to deal with it. But again, uh, when you begin to hurt people you love, you begin to change. And that change that he has is maturity and new ways of coping with it. Uh, I think a lot of season two and uh, maybe even season three, uh, we'll be, not be talking about any of that, but uh, will it really be him progressing in that journey of maturity? Because Jordan, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but like, didn't Jonathan have powers in the comics? Like, correct. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah there. I mean, there are different uh, renditions of Jonathan, so to speak. And this one's completely new. Uh, obviously, you know, I mean, being a twin brother alone, that's a that's a completely new concept. But uh, yeah, no, he does have powers, and in fact, he becomes Superboy. In yeah. The and yeah. and you mentioned the, you mentioned the strength of the writing, and I think on paper it seems more like. Jordan, Jonathan, sorry, should have the powers in a way because he's the more kind of stoic embodiment of who Superman is or who Clark is versus the vulnerable kind of loner uh, that is Jordan. So I feel like there's way more possibilities and, and storytelling potential to give you the powers as Jordan. Yeah, uh, I, I think that's what they were, I think you hit the nail on the head there. Uh, you know, Jonathan Kent, even in the comics, kind of looks like me. So I do, I, I have no ability to speak on this, but I do believe we were somewhat split, at least in what they were taking inspiration from the comics with. Um, yeah, I, I, I do know what you mean in that there is a lot of story to be told. Uh, and I think that story that they're trying to tell is that powers don't necessarily mean the person. Uh, and I think the metaphor, as this show so often does metaphors to things in real life, would be, you know, oftentimes your position doesn't necessarily reflect who you are. And who you are may change to your position if it can't change, not just the other way around. It's a really well-written show. I mean, the more you think about it, the yeah, more you realize you're putting yeah. stuff in there. Sometimes he's saying stuff, like, just now on stage, and I'm kind of like, wow, that's pretty genius. Yeah, they're just geniuses out there. Well, it I makes mean, you think about these tropes and, and yeah. these... these properties, if you will, you know? It really, I think they just, when you, I think it all starts to unravel when you realize that a lot of the grounded behavior treats the powers as a metaphor for things that we deal with. In my storyline, it's a lot about growing up. In uh, Clark's storyline, it's a lot about still growing up as your parent. You know, the things that you do as a parent, especially when your kids are little, affect them their whole lives. Same way that, you know, you can affect someone with your powers. I, I, I mean, there's so many levels to it. Lois is power of the pen. You know, ah. you, you know what I mean? Like that that's another beautiful little sentiment that Lois could probably stir up more shit of stuff. <laughs> Lois can Sorry, probably ear, earmuffs in the front sugar there. honey iced tea. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Lois could probably stir up more with her pen yeah. than Clark would be willing to. She still uses her pen. Well, you know, typewriter. <laughs> I actually think they have typewriters around there. Right? Okay. They're like click 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 Sounds like, a, you know, some science fiction stuff going on in there. Totally. Smallville. Yeah. All right, if you have a question, again, for our uh, two cast members here, you can go on up there and ask it at the mic there. Uh, Alex, I just want you to expand a bit on the character. Like, do you have people coming up to you? Like, we live in an era, you mentioned stigma earlier, and we live in an era where we're breaking down a lot of barriers, and people are embracing uh, mental health and really admitting who they are, getting help, and not being afraid to a admit a lot of things about who they are and what they're struggling with. Do you get people coming up to you saying, thank you for your portrayal of Jordan because I see a lot of myself in you? I, I do, and it touches me every time, to be honest. Um, yeah, uh, it, it's, I would like to say it's why I do it. I mean, it's, I do it because I got the role, but at the same point, I take it with such importance because of that, uh, and there's a weight to it because of that. Uh, you know. A lot of the themes of the show, especially my storyline, are those modern day breaking down of barriers. I think the fact that everyone here is at a Comic Con and that we're all proud of it and we all love geeking out. I met William Shatner, I watched every single one of his episodes, he will never know. Uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? We're all geeking out when we're all in a public forum doing it, which is something maybe 40 years ago we could be ridiculed for. 
Just being here shows the progress and the change that we've all made. And I'm proud of everyone for showing up and I'm happy for everyone that we get to just sit in this awesomeness. I mean, this is really cool. That this whole place is really good. All the, all the celebrities, all the, you know, yeah. I, I, I met. Um, the most fun I've had all week. Seriously. It's a blast. And like, this is so much fun. I'm meeting all these people that drew all these comic books and, uh, you know, the people that love them as well. There's joy to be had when you take down barriers that are pointless. And we're experiencing that joy now. And I hope Jordan experiences that in the form of comfort. Right on, okay, cool. Uh, we'll take a question over here. What would your fortresses of solitude actually look like if you were to build your own? <laughs> my room. I call it my fortress of solitude. I Uber Eats straight to my room. No one Contactless may come in. This delivery of jute fried chicken. And <laughs> my fortress of solitude. Oh, man. I think, my, I don't know, mine would look like... What kind of things would populate it? What would be in it? A lot of empty food bags. Yeah. Maybe she has chips. Yeah. That's Stormtrooper. That's Stormtrooper. Yeah. Hi, <laughs> <laughs> Captain. That is awesome. Yeah, yeah. Sick fit. Um, yeah, I don't know, maybe... Uh, uh, big screen uh, TV. Yeah, yeah, probably, yeah big screen TV. Plasma. You know, there would be a lot of lounging in my Fortress of Solitude. Sure. A lot less safe in the world. Bean bags, uh, lazy boy, foot yeah, massager. Yeah, you know, yeah, Fortress of Solitude. Man, well, how about any of y'all? What would be a really fun idea for a Fortress of Solitude? Shout it out, shout it out. PlayStation 5. Yeah. PlayStation. Yeah, 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 yeah that's good. Oh, how about this? Anyone have a favorite episode? All of them. No. All of them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's, that's the best answer there yeah. is. Oh, man. I want to know, for you two growing up, because you're, you're youngins, but um, it's funny because you mentioned the Dark Knight trilogy, and for me it was the 1989 Batman, like the Tim Burton one with Michael Keaton. I saw that at the West Edmonton Mall of all places with my dad. I think I was eight, and that's a dark movie when, when it comes to superhero films, and it was groundbreaking at the time. So that was kind of my first foray or my big screen moment, but w Marvel or DC, what were the big kind of superhero films or, or shows that you kind of loved growing up on? I remember, uh, that's a funny, I have a similar story. My brother took me to see The Dark Knight when it first came out in 08. So I was seven or eight years old. Um, and I, I mean, I was like way too young to be watching. Like, that was a dark, I mean, if you really think about it, like, you know, it's PG-13, sure. Yeah. But it was a dark movie, you know? It was, it was brutal, and, uh, but in the best way possible, right? I mean, it's an amazing film, but uh, he took me to see that, and I remember my mom just got super pissed at him. She was like, why would you take him to see that? Really? And I remember vividly, vividly in my memory, the one scene that stood out when I was watching it as a kid. Most of it went over my head, but I remember the one scene that stood out was when uh, uh, there's the Batmobile chase with the, jo with the Joker. He's in the truck, and he like, slides the door open. He's got the rocket launcher, and then, and then the Batmobile crashes, and uh, the Bat cycle pops out the front, and the homeless guys are just like, <laughs> watching it go by, and that, that scene, like, that scene just stood out in my mind still, like, even as a kid, I remember that vividly, and also the bank robbery scene at the beginning, but, yeah, yeah which, that's, that's, that was definitely always, that's, I think that's why, maybe, because I didn't watch it again for many years, but I think that's why it holds a special place in my heart. Yeah, and the bank heist scene is a beautiful homage to Michael Mann's Heat as well, which is a classic crime epic from the mid-90s, and uh, to see that in a superhero movie, uh, such a beautifully, eloquently uh, portrayed action scene, what it was it really elevated the genre and I think that's what Nolan brought to those movies and he kind of like raised the bar from there You know when I was a kid we had the DVD box set of the original Batman like the OG Adam West Really? Oh, yeah, I've watched every one of those like four or five times my dad and I used to watch them with my brother Oh, yeah, with Adam West Saving the world. So campy, but yeah. so good. Yeah, no, oh yeah, oh yeah, no. I'm telling you, the underwear on the outside of the pants, that was a look. He wasn't even in good shape. I mean, I, I envy that. I, I want to do that. I had a joke at one point. If I ever got a lot of powers and started fighting crime, I used to joke with the producers. What if, what if like, I, what if I just grew out like a big beard? I was in bad shape. I mean, I still have powers, like, right? I mean, in the end of the day, I don't really need to be fit. So, like, I'm, I'm in bad shape. I got, I, I got a big beard, and I'm 
fucking awesome. <laughs> <laughs> freaking awesome. It's okay, you're passionate. We like passionate. That. Yeah, yeah. I, I just think that would be so awesome. Kind of like Fat Thor in the uh, the Avengers movie, right? Man, I, man, that would be so awesome. Yeah. Also, you know, the more representation, the better. You know what I mean? Exactly. Yeah. No, I, I'm serious. For We're real. breaking like, down barriers. I, I, yeah, like uh, I think anyone that sees themselves in one of these characters and has the ability to see themselves in one of these characters can feel empowered. And I don't think that's something we could ever take lightly in doing this because it's just awesome that we can do it. Yeah, totally. Uh, okay, question over here. Actually, this will have to be our last one because uh, we're getting the rap sign. So uh, you get the final word. Uh, if you guys could have any superpowers yourself, what would they be? Ooh. Um, every, all of them. If we could have any superpower. You didn't make it plural. So I'm going to go with every superpower that exists. <laughs> I don't know, I probably, I, I want to say invisibility, but that sounds so creepy, you know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> this guy, you know what I mean? But like, no, I, honestly, I mean, that would be pretty cool. Uh, I'd like to know what people are saying about me behind my back. Super hearing, though, you could do the same thing. That's true. Um, Ultimate eavesdropping. But flying, no, honestly, flying. I mean, I really think that that would be the best. That I just think that that would be incredible. But that's like also, that's also like, you know, those are pretty basic superpowers. You could go in depth and like come up with something crazy. I was gonna say, the superpower to stay here with all of you lovely folks all night. Oh! oh. oh. Yeah. There you go. I won. <laughs> <laughs> uh, as we wrap, I just want to uh, get, tell us about some of the, uh, you guys bring a great balance to the show in terms of the sibling rivalry and, and providing those comedic elements. So why is that so important to you and why do you continue to sort of bring that to the set and, and uh, create that great uh, balance of characters? I mean, I think that that, uh, again, is one of those elements of the show that, that people enjoy seeing. I think that it keeps it grounded and real and keeps it relatable as well. So when we when we come on set and we sort of start joking around before the scene and yeah. it helps it flow and feel more natural and then you know we get into the scene especially like a lot of the scenes where we like we'll be in the whatever like in the bedroom like the the, the twin scenes like you know he's playing video games or whatever um, and because now that Natalie and John Henry are moved in and so it's uh, so I guess we're we're sharing a bedroom so then yeah so we're both so like there's a lot of quite a few scenes coming up in season two where, uh, you know, one of us is in there and the other's kind of like, hey, like, is everything cool, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and those scenes are always fun to do and there's usually a little bit of uh, comedic relief in there. And, uh, Which is so important when you're dealing with so much drama as well, yeah. right? Yeah, I remember like in episode six while Clark is on the phone, because uh, uh, a lot of times it's just us messing around, right? I yeah. I mean, yeah, we're like really good friends in real life, like best friends in real life, so it's it's, uh, it's easy to just mess around and do stuff in the background for sure. So like one of the things I was like, what if you know we just plan to punch the log? I mean a dent in the log, and then Clark's on the phone with General Lane. I'm like, you know what? What if, what if you try punching the log afterward in the background? I'm like you actually like hurt your hand. We had like a whole scene. It's there in the background. Look, in the final there. cut, they actually let us do it. Yeah. Wow. Uh, you know there's a whole. It was like a whole two weeks where I was doing like that thing. To you. Oh, you did that yesterday at the panel. I did do it in the panel. Yesterday at the panel, I don't know if anybody, raise your hand if you noticed. Yeah, you did that yesterday. Yeah, no, so I got really good at it. At one point, I had the idea of what if I just stared at his chest and then he looks down. It was great. Oh, that old trick. Yeah, I love that. You know what I mean? We were getting creative with it. So I think that got in the show once or twice. I don't know if that was by accident or on purpose. <laughs> uh, that's amazing. We'll wrap there, guys. Thank you so much for your candor, all your wonderful stories. Let's give it up for Alex Garfin and Jordan Elsass, and we look forward to seeing yeah. much more of your journeys down the road. Good luck, gentlemen. Yeah. Thank you so much. It's fun to stay at the YMCA. It's fun to stay at the YMCA.